Welcome. I am here to help you complete your income driven repayment plan application. Once you submit the application, you are on your way to an affordable monthly payment. Feel free to pause and restart the video at any point. Before we begin, I want to let you know the quickest way to apply is on studentaid.gov. This allows you to link your IRS tax information to your application, making it easy to complete the whole application process in minutes. Applying online also means your application is processed quicker than submitting a paper application. If you are filling out a paper application form, I am happy to help you through it. Just a couple of notes before we get started. Follow the directions after each item, or question, they lead you to the next section or the next requested item. Answer only the items on the application and avoid writing in information or responses. The application is designed so that no other information is required outside of what it asks. Only select one option for each item. Let's get started with the application. Section 1 of the application asks for your social security number and your contact information. It may be pre-populated with your current information, if not, check the box and fill out the appropriate or current information. Section 2 Item 1 asks why you are filling out the application. Select the first box if you are not currently in an income-driven repayment plan. If you are submitting income documentation to annually recertify the application or recalculate your payment amount based on a change in income, select the corresponding box. Lastly, if you want to change to a different income-driven repayment plan during your 12-month application, you would select the last box. Item 2 asks you which repayment plan you'd like to enter into. Selecting the first box ensures your eligibility for each plan is evaluated and you are placed in the one with the lowest monthly payment. To further explore all options, you can visit our website at www.migratelakes.org or give us a call at 800-236-4300. Item 3 Do you have more than one student loan servicer? If so, select yes. If you don't, select no. Do not include any private loans in your selection here. This application is for federal student loans only. Item 4 Is your loan currently in a deferment or forbearance? Notice, there is direction to move to item 5. It's important to follow this path because answering items you aren't directed to may delay the processing of your application. Section 3 asks about your family size. Do not include yourself or your spouse in this section. They are automatically included in your family size if appropriate. Section 4 of the application first focuses on your marital status. It is extremely important to answer appropriately here and based on your answers, follow the indicated path. Item 7 asks your marital status and your next step is based on your answer. Pay careful attention to item 7 as providing conflicting information in this section often leads to delayed or rejected applications. Item 8 asks about your spouse's federal student loans. Do not include any private loans when considering your answer. Review section 4A carefully and proceed as directed. The remaining pieces of section 4 ask about taxable income or if that income has decreased since last filing taxes. It's important to remember, you are not required to provide documentation of your income if you state you do not currently have taxable income. Section 5 provides income documentation instructions. You only need to follow these instructions if, based on your answer in Section 4 you were instructed to provide income documentation instead of a tax return or tax transcripts. Section 6 Read this section carefully to determine if the checkbox for the one-month reduced payment forbearance applies to you, make your selection accordingly, and follow through with any payments as indicated. Note: If you are requesting to change from the income-based repayment plan to a different income-driven repayment plan, the forbearance and payment is required. Finally, don't forget to sign the application, as it is required for the processing. If you have a spouse, and selected the married response to item 7, your spouse must sign the application as well. 
in no way are they taking responsibility for the loan, it's merely to certify the information about their marital status and income is the same. If you need help completing this form, contact Great Lakes at 800-236-4300 from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. We are here to help. Return the completed form and any documentation by fax to 800-375-5288. Or by mail to Great Lakes Borrower Services, P.O. Box 7860, Madison, Wisconsin 53707. Thanks.